Thank you so much, uh, Chair Feinstein, and um, to um, Senator Collins, and uh, in absentia, all of the committee members who I know are really interested in, in, this, uh, in this topic uh, regarding the Department of Energy and our, our 2023 budget request. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud to lead this department as the 16th Secretary of Energy, and I'm grateful for the support that you've given to the Department of Energy, including through the 2022 omnibus legislation. Um, under the Biden administration, as you have noted, Madam Chair, uh, the Department of Energy is, is not just interested, committed, deeply committed to increasing energy security, affordability, and resilience. We are committed to securing the clean energy supply chain that's necessary to reduce our reliance on fo unabated fossil fuels and to increase our energy independence. Like the $3 billion from the bipartisan infrastructure law for battery manufacturing that we announced on Monday. We are also committed to strengthening America's competitiveness by accelerating scientific discovery and innovation. And these commitments are reflected in this budget, and a look around the world shows us that this is the right focus with the right priorities for this moment in history. Right now, we face a trio of crises. One is climate change, which cost the United States $148 billion last year alone in damages from extreme weather. Then the second is COVID-19, and of course now Russia's war, invasion of Ukraine, which is costing American families right now, too, as they see prices rising from gas stations to grocery stores. So let me be clear first that the Department of Energy is using every tool available to increase oil and energy supply. In late March, for example, the president authorized the release of one million barrels per day from our Strategic Petroleum Reserve over the next six months, 180 million barrels total, coordinating with our international allies and partners who also committed to releasing another 60 million barrels. And I appreciate Congress's support of President Biden's ban on Russian energy imports. We're also working to offer relief to American families at home through the three and a half billion dollar weatherization assistance program that was provided in the bipartisan infrastructure law. But ultimately these crises tell us that energy security and energy independence and energy affordability all depend on a shift toward American made clean energy. And that's why we're working with our international allies to advance alternative energy sources and boost clean energy manufacturing. It's why we're grateful that Congress, through the Energy Act of 2020 and the bipartisan infrastructure law, has invested in clean building technologies uh, here at home with American parts and American labor. I'm grateful that we are uh, with members of Congress that they have uh, demonstrated the faith in our department to oversee a lot of these investments in the new offices, the clean energy goals, the supply chain goals that come with them. We're hard at work implementing this legislation here at uh, Department of Energy. Most recently, DOE began accepting applications, for example, for the $6 billion in civilian nuclear credit for the existing fleet of nuclear uh, plants, a way to keep reliable and clean energy online. The $62 billion from the bipartisan infrastructure law that came to the Department of Energy is an historic investment in projects that will serve our nation for decades. But on its own, on its own, it's not sufficient to address the nation's full energy challenges. And that's why our request includes base year funding for efforts to complement the bipartisan infrastructure law in order to maximize its impact to lower costs and provide clean, reliable, secure American power. This request also supports our Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, our Office of Science, the 17 national labs, which sharpen our innovative capacity and our competitive edge. And of course, our budget includes funding for DOE missions that keep our country safe, like environmental management, and nu uh, nuclear security. 
I'm proud of DOE's work to confront our nation's most pressing challenges. I reaffirm my commitment to leading this extraordinary department with its extraordinary employees as we implement congressional actions from the bipartisan infrastructure law, the Energy Act, and to those still to come, hopefully the Bipartisan Innovation Act and the President's full agenda for building a better America. So I thank you for the opportunity to be here today, and I'm happy to answer your questions.